The Beltran Leyva Organization was founded by four brothers, Marcos Arturo, Carlos, Alfredo, and Hector. The brothers got their start as poppy farmers in the state of Sinaloa. In the beginning, Beltran Leyva was part of the Sinaloa cartel, and the Beltran brothers had good ties with El Chapo and his family. But when their leader, Alfredo Beltran Leyva, was arrested based on intelligence provided by Guzman, it triggered them and BLO separated from Sinaloa. The two organizations have remained bitter rivals since then. The void in leadership due to various murders and arrests has taken the dominant position of Beltran Leyva in the region. It's not a strong player anymore on the playing field, but when this organization was influential, many companies in the corporate sector were linked with it. Today, we'll look at BLO's ties with those companies and the authorities and how this influence helped them with their drug trafficking business. Stay with me till the end to find out all about today's topic. Now, let's get back to the video and uncover some facts. The Beltran Leyva Organization began its business activities from their home state of Sinaloa with small-time opium poppy growers. The brothers then went to Amado Carrillo, who employed them as hitmen and transporters. Amado was already running a successful cartel. He had established routes from south to Colombia and north into the United States for drug trafficking. Beltran Leyva followed in his footsteps, and like him, they were ruthless and ambitious. Beltran Leyva's family became close with El Chapo after his marriage, and it formed a strong alliance between the two. When Guzman was jailed, the Beltran brothers helped Guzman's brother. Arturo maintained the business and later on also helped with the escape of Guzman in 2001. A blood alliance was formed between El Chapo, El Mayo, and Beltran Leyva brothers. Alfredo Beltran Leyva married the cousin of Guzman, and their pact strengthened their bond. While a fight was going on between Guzman and Amado Carrillo's brother, Rodolfo Carrillo, Beltran Leyva organization was working to leave its mark on the world. They formed their security team. Arturo created his unit, which he called Arturo Special Forces, or Fuerzas Especiales de Arturo. BLO's power and influence were increasing rapidly as they were expanding. By 2005, the BLO was reportedly operating in 10 states and Mexico City. Beltran Leyva started penetrating the security and political forces, which they did with alarming efficiency. A recorded conversation between one of the members of the Drug Enforcement Administration and LH of Beltran Leyva revealed LH having many top members of the government's National Investigative Agency and the country's drug czar on the payroll. While the BLO clan grew influential by the second, their public appearances increased. The tension started to build up with Alfredo Beltran Leyva was arrested based on the intel provided by Guzman. Bloodshed started due to this dispute, and both parties made alliances with different organizations to fight each other's power. We know that the Kingpin Act applies economic and other financial sanctions to significant foreign narcotics traffickers and their organizations worldwide. Penalties for violations of the Kingpin Act range from civil penalties of up to 1.075 million per violation to more severe criminal penalties. Kingpin sanctions were placed on a drug cartel security chief along with his company and its manager. Arnoldo Villa Sanchez was the head of security for Hector Beltran Leyva, the head of the Beltran Leyva cartel. He carried out numerous acts of violence on his boss's behalf. Villa Sanchez was the largest shareholder of Sistemas Elite de Seguridad Privada, SA, the CV, a Guadalajara, Mexico-based security services firm with more than 150 employees. Miguel Loza Hernandez managed the company and was also placed under the Kingpin Act. In 2009, Hector Beltran Leyva was indicted for drug trafficking charges in the U.S. The Mexican government offered rewards for anyone providing information on the head of Beltran Leyva. On January 20, 2008, Mexican authorities arrested Alfredo Beltran Leyva, the former leader of the Beltran Leyva organization on organized crime, drug trafficking, and unauthorized use of military-grade weapon charges. In December 2009, the Mexican military killed Marcos Arturo Beltran Leyva. As a result of all the chaos and arrests, Hector Beltran Leyva assumed the role of leader of the Beltran Leyva organization. Some authorities working in Chicago 
discovered that the former Mexican police commander, Ivan Reyes Arzarte, leaked information to cartel leaders under investigation by the DEA. Ivan was a former law enforcement official. He used his powers as a law enforcement official to protect the BLO's interests and regularly received payments totaling millions of dollars. He provided the leaders of Beltran Leva with sensitive information regarding the people working against their organization. As a result, BLO removed their threats and got them kidnapped and murdered before things got out of their hands. Six military officers were found involved in protecting Beltran Leva. The active and retired officers, including four generals, protected the Beltran Leva gang by allowing drug planes to shuttle cocaine through airports in Mexico City and Cancun. The allegations were partially based on testimony from witnesses in protective custody. They were identified in court documents as Jennifer and Mateo. Mateo was a code name for Sergio El Grande Villarreal. A former cartel member extradited to the United States, the new administration got the case after the new government was elected. When Alfredo was arrested due to the intel provided by Guzman, a battle started between Sinaloa and Beltran Leva. BLO allied themselves with their former arch-rivals, the Zetas. The Sinaloa cartel reached working agreements with the Gulf Cartel and the Familia Michoacana, a ruthless group. Sinaloa used their contacts in the federal government and made every effort to tear down Beltran Leva. Dozens of operatives were arrested or killed in the process of their rivalry. When all this fight was going on, Mexican Marines killed Arturo Beltran Leva after he barricaded himself in an apartment in an upscale neighborhood in Cuernavaca. Hector Beltran Leva became the head of the BLO in 2009. According to the government, he passed himself off as many things, and the last image he took was an art dealer and real estate monger. It was a good cover for a guy who had the $5 million bounty on his head in the US and a $2 million bounty in Mexico. When things went down for BLO, it lost its territory particularly in Acapulco, a key entry point for drugs and operational stronghold. It split into factions, which included one led by Edgar Valdez Villarreal, alias La Barbie, and another led by Sergio Villarreal Barragan, alias The Big Boy. Sergio aligned with Hector, but he was arrested, while Edgar turned himself in. The only thing that was predicted was Hector going down with them, but Hector escaped. After four years, he reconstituted BLO while working with his business and political contacts. He chose to operate in some of the least violent places behind his inconspicuous cover. Hector made his home in Querétaro. BLO's allies in the military fell apart. Hence, they allied with the Zetas, Mexico's most violent criminal organization, and the armed wing of the Juarez cartel, known as La Linea. The new alliance waged a bloody campaign throughout Sinaloa, Durango, and Chihuahua, killing hundreds of rival gunmen and displacing thousands more. Hector was captured eating a meal at a popular restaurant with the political insider Herman Goyeneche. There were no bodyguards, no deadly gunfight. It was just a quiet arrest, fingerprinting, photos, followed by a perp walk. Beltran Leva Organization was once the most dominant and successful cartel organized crime groups. After they broke up with the Sinaloa cartel, their leaders made various efforts to keep their drug operation going. The organization had ties with the security company, military officers, and they also infiltrated political groups and leaders for their own advantage. But the organization was dismantled and is almost extinct today because all four founders are either dead or arrested. The last head of the organization, Hector, was arrested in 2014. That was the final nail in the coffin to put down the Beltran Leva cartel. With this, our video comes to an end. I hope you got a better picture of the rise, associations, business activities, and the fall of one of Mexico's most dominant cartel groups. It would be great if you will take a moment and subscribe to my channel below and hit the bell icon to get the latest notifications of my videos. How could things have gone better for Beltran Leva? Do you think the organization could have prevented its downfall and held its strong position? Tell me in the comment section down below. I would love to hear your opinion on the Beltran Leva group. Also, put a like on this video and share it with your friends. I'll see you guys soon with another exciting story about the Mexican cartels. Until then, take care folks.